Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this worship service on this third Sunday of Easter. My name is Jonathan Blanke. I'm pastor at Resurrection. Together with Vicar Alan Shaw, we are delighted to be together with all of you who are watching us today as we celebrate the gift of our crucified and resurrected Lord Jesus. I invite you to refer to our church's website, rlcary.org. As a place to retrieve your bulletin, you can click on the Worship Online banner or the Easter banner at the top of the homepage. Also, if you desire to support us in our ministry to the community, our ministry is ongoing, even though we do not worship in person. Uh, you can go to our, the Ministries tab on that page, click on it, find Online Giving, and you can continue to give electronically and support our ministry in that way. We're privileged to be joined together on this day in worship in celebration for all that Jesus has done for us. We begin with the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. If you're by yourself, please know that that peace of God is God's abundant gift for you, for you to share with anyone you may encounter this week. If you're worshiping with someone else, we invite you to share the peace of the Lord with that person now. Peace of the Lord be with you, brother. We begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We continue with the hymn, Open the Eyes of My Heart.
Let us come into God's presence today with penitent hearts and minds, asking for His grace and mercy in our lives. Lord God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, we we freely freely admit admit that sin sin in our our lives is troubling. We have have sinned sinned against you in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. We've done done what we should not have done, and and we we have have failed to do what is expected of us. For the the sake sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, strengthen us in our daily walk to life everlasting. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, even our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Let us continue with the Song of Praise, Lutheran Service Book, number 483. God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Give to your faithful people who have been rescued from the peril of everlasting death, gladness forever, and eternal joy. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 2 verse 14a, and verses 36 through 41. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? 
Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to follow along as we repeat responsibly the words of the gradual. Christ has arisen from the dead. God, God the, the Father, Father has crowned him with glory, glory and honor. honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He, he has, has put, put all things, things under his feet. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 25. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that, is not, that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'd like to ask the children who are worshiping with us today, come down off your couches and sit right in front of your TV. I'm going to try and take a seat here as well. Oh, it might take me a second, so I know I'll give you a second to come up as well. I'm going to, let's, I'm going to, let's play a little game here. Have you ever played the game, Would You Rather? Let, let's try that, and feel free to join in uh, here as well. Would you rather have a scoop of your favorite ice cream or share your ice cream with someone else who doesn't have it. Go ahead and tell your parents what you would rather do. Would you rather play with your favorite toy with someone you don't know, or give your favorite toy to them and play, uh, play with, uh, and go and get another toy? Which would you rather do? Would you rather, last one, would you rather go and watch a movie with your friends or would you like to stay and talk to someone who looks sad? I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, think, I think I answered A to all of those. I, I picked the first one, I think, to all of those. And, and that's, that's the point. It's, it's, when, we, when we look at our human natural self, it's natural for us to focus in on ourselves. It's not natural to focus out on someone else, but we're called to love. We're called to love one another. And so loving one another takes, it takes practice. The more that you love someone, the more that you love one another, the easier it gets. Well, maybe, I don't know if it gets any easier. It's still work throughout your life. And so you want to always look for those opportunities that you can love one another, to share your ice cream with someone, to take time to spend talking with someone who looks like they may be upset about something. It doesn't mean that you can't go and do those other things, but look for those opportunities to love one another. And that's what we're going to talk about here in a minute. During this time when we're socially distancing ourselves, but we're spiritually close to others, we have to pay particular attention to how do we love one another? What can we do 
to do that. So let's go ahead and, and say a prayer together, a repeat after me prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. For being the God of love. For being the God of love. For showing us how to love. For showing us how to love. For giving us the direction to love one another. For giving us the direction to love one another. We especially thank you. We especially thank you. For loving us so much. For loving us so much. That you gave your only son Jesus. That you gave your only son Jesus. To die for us on the cross. To die for us on the cross. So that we can live forever with him in heaven. So that we can live to forever in heaven. We love you Jesus. We love you Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take another minute to get up. It's a little harder as we go along. But let's continue with the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia. We know that Christ, Christ being raised from, from the dead, dead will, will never die again. Death, Death no, no longer has dominion over, over, him. over him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Did, Did not our hearts burn within us while, while he talked, talked to, us to us on the road, road while he opened to us the scriptures? scriptures. Alleluia. Let's continue with the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast, one of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Naz Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But they had hoped but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen the visions of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but he did not see him. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us. For it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus has recognized them when he broke the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us continue with our hymn, Alleluia. Jesus is risen.
words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our message this morning is the second in a series from the book of 1 Peter. Last week we heard Pastor Jonathan say that it's natural for us to be wringing our hands and asking, God, what are you up to in a time like this, living in the trials of this world? But as we focus on the sufficient grace and mercy of Christ and turn to God's promises at work, that anxiety changes to an attitude of faith and trust, looking ahead to the promises of God that are yet to be fulfilled. So instead of anxiety, we say with anticipation and excitement as we look at the work God is doing around us and ask, Lord, what are you up to? I saw one meme not long ago that said, okay, introverts, this is the moment you've been training for your entire lives. I'm pretty sure social distancing comes easier for some than for others. As an introvert myself, I'm very comfortable with working from home. But I also miss meeting with you at church. I miss having friends over to the house. So much more is different today than a month ago. We took a lot for granted. Pastor Jonathan and I finished recording last week's service and shook hands. Immediately there was this sense of, oh no, we're not supposed to be shaking hands anymore. It was just a bizarre alien feeling, knowing that just a few weeks earlier we were all passing the peace with handshakes. Together we remain socially distant, but spiritually close. Peter's readers didn't have a pandemic on their hands, but he was encouraging and instructing them on what would be some troubled waters not long afterwards. It's only a couple years after his letter that both Peter and Paul are martyred and Jerusalem is destroyed by the Romans. Another form of social distancing may have been taking place about this time since followers of Jesus would have been kept at a distance for refusing to worship the emperor. They were spiritually close, but socially distant. Their views on worshiping one God, the resurrection, eating the body and blood of Christ in communion, would have been socially out of sync with the world around them. Socially distant, but spiritually close to their fellow Christians. Peter's instructions to both Jew and Gentile Christians alike spread around that region of the world is just as important for us as it was to his original readers. So let's focus today's message on verse 22. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Can we take a minute just to break that apart a minute? A little. I mean, I, I had to read it a couple times, so just listening to me read it to you may be a challenge for you. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth. Here's our Easter message. Our souls have been purified by the blood of Christ and our obedience to Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Peter uses two different words for love in this part of the passage. A brotherly love and a complete, all-inclusive love. I can appreciate why the Greeks had three words for love. We throw that word around carelessly at times. Oh man, how I love pizza. I love you, honey. Yep, love you too. My love for God is different than my love for my wife, which is different than my love for pizza, which is different than my love for sitting around a bonfire and drinking a good Lutheran beverage. Peter uses two different words to highlight Jesus' command to love one another in an all-inclusive, servant-minded focus. This kind of love isn't just something that comes naturally either. Sure, we love our spouse or we love our parents, but our natural, human, self-centered, self-serving attitude is the default setting that we've been using ever since we were one day old and had to try and tell someone we were hungry. It's why we love our siblings 
but that toy is mine. It's why we love our spouse. But why can't she just see it from my point of view for once? We love, we know that love is patient and kind, but love is work. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that Peter links the two thoughts in one sentence. Your souls are purified because Christ sacrificed himself and you obeyed the truth. Now look around at each other in a brotherly love and serve everyone in that self-sacrificing, all-encompassing love. What does all this have to do with where we are today in COVID? Well, one of my concerns during this time of social distancing is that since, we're phys- since we physically see and socialize with each other less today, there may be a greater potential to keep a self-centered point of view. We want to keep our business as our business. And so when someone checks in on us, we respond saying, oh, everything is fine, when in reality, we're struggling. Some of us may be struggling with loneliness, especially if we're the only person in the home, and now we're told, don't go outside into large gatherings. Some of us are struggling with depression, especially if we had emotional illnesses or mental issues before this virus. Some of us are struggling financially, especially if we lost our jobs and our client base is now significantly lower than we anticipated earlier this year. Some of us are struggling because our kids have just stepped on our last nerve and if school doesn't start up soon, we're struggling. And we may be tempted to say, everything is fine when what we really want to say is, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. And now that we're also socially distant, we have a convenient excuse not to reach out to someone and admit that we may need some help. I ran across one of my co-workers the other day, and he said that he's been told to work one week on and two weeks off while they rotate the work between three people. He said he's one of the fortunate ones, because he has a check that continues to come in, even while he's off. But when he's off, he said he still feels like he's going stir-crazy, like the walls are closing in on him during his two-week off rotation. Another friend of ours said that they won't be receiving a paycheck for the next two months. And another one just told us that he was let go from his job and now faces a world where nobody seems to be hiring as he looks for ways to get his kids back on health insurance with no foreseeable income. This is not the time to look inwards and let our pride kick in and say, everything's fine, when the truth may be that we're struggling and don't know what to do next. The truth is, we find it hard to ask God, Lord, what are you up to with anticipation or excitement? This is the time for our love to kick in, serving our friends, family, and neighbors. Okay, Christians, this is the moment you've been training for your entire Christian lives. We need to love all people with an all-encompassing love that says, I've got you. We'll get through this together. But we also need to love one another in a brotherly love that says to other Christians, we are family. And family is where we should be turning first in a time of need. So let's build on that thought. Let's look for those opportunities to serve in love. Some will come right out and ask for help. Others may allude to it, and it's our act of listening that picks up on cues that says that things may not be what they seem. There's a line in the movie Robots that goes, Find a need? fill a need. But during social distancing, what happens if you don't see the need? I heard one radio announcer say some well-known figures were putting together truckloads of food and supplies to go to various parts of the country that needed support. That's great. It doesn't matter what religion or political party or gender, 
They had the means to organize and probably many of the funds to support it themselves. That's not my situation. But my wife and I did talk to the couple that lost their paychecks. And we said, they, they told us that they had a plan and thanked us as we left it at that, telling them, we figured you did, but just in case, we know how stressful things can be when the plan runs out. And we just want you to know that we're here if that ever happens. As an alternative, I figured the church probably sees needs weekly more than I do, so I changed our online giving to the church in order to support the funding streams that can go directly to help others. We thought, if we can't find the need, maybe someone else can find the need, and we can help them fill a need. It's a start. Where are your opportunities to love and serve one another? How are your friends and family and neighbors doing? Have you checked up on them? How about those who are living alone? Or how about the kids that are old enough to stay at home alone and so they're left alone while parents go off to work? How about the parents who are now trying to figure out how to teach and work at home or support online schooling efforts? It's a brand new reality for many. Have you found a need? Can you fill that need? Do you know someone that can fill that need? In what areas have you been called to love because of your obedience to the truth that Christ saved you and is now calling you to love one another? There is another side to the stay-at-home orders that I see abounding from various social media posts as well. It's the broader appreciation for the little things. Those things that we never noticed before or didn't take the time to appreciate. It's about people taking pictures of flowers. It's about people using each letter of the alphabet to say that they are grateful for, for things over the next month. It's the ability to eat dinner together as a family. I'm almost ashamed to say that we've probably eaten dinner together more in the last six weeks than the past six years. It's about family game nights or learning that my dog enjoys walks, but she really enjoys sprinting while I race her on my bike. After almost two and a half miles of sprints, she sleeps good. It's putting together a puzzle or finally getting to that home project or listening to the birds singing in the morning or watching the sunset on the front porch in the evening. God keeps showing up. But even with these opportunities to notice the little things around us, it doesn't take much to see that the world is perishing around us. Perishing that all started in the Garden of Eden, the place where we shifted our God-centric to self-centric and focused on caring about number one more than love one another. It's where the world had a curse placed on it, making things like a global pandemic possible in the first place. The world groans, waiting for Jesus' restoration at his second coming. Peter's reference to Isaiah mentions the effect of this curse. All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flowers of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls. If there's one thing a pandemic can do, it's remind us that we are perishing. The world is perishing. Our dreams and retirement funds are perishing. Our plans for the future seem shaky at best. But thankfully, Isaiah continues, the word of the Lord remains forever. The world may be perishing, but the world word of the Lord is imperishable. It will never change or die. It is the living word of God that we read, examine, and apply to our lives. It is the means by which God speaks to us. It is the word that says, peace be with you. It is the word that reminds us that God knows exactly what is happening, when it will end, and what will happen in the meantime. But more importantly, it is the word that Peter also says, this word is the good news that was preached to you. The good news of Christ's death and resurrection 
The good news of Christ's defeat over death. It is the good news that our sins are now paid in full, ransomed, not by perishable items like gold and silver, but by the imperishable imperishable blood of Christ. This is the good news that purified our souls. This word lasts forever. This word is imperishable. And it is this word that we place our faith and hope in God. Not in politicians. Not in doctors. Not in CEOs. Not even in our family. Our faith and hope is in God alone. And so today we love. Tomorrow, we love. The next day, our sincere brotherly love will look to love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Let us pray using the words of Philippians 4, verses 5 to 7. Let your gentleness be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us say together the affirmation of faith using Luther's explanation to the second article of the ancient Apostles' Creed. I believe believe that that Jesus Christ, Christ, true true God, God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and and also true man, born born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has has redeemed redeemed me, a lost and and condemned condemned person, person, purchased purchased and and won me from all sins, from death and from from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with with his holy, precious precious blood, and And with his innocent innocent suffering and death, that that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. We continue with our musical offering, Mighty to Save.
At this time, we offer up our prayers to the One who is mighty to save, knowing that He hears and answers. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. You have heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, and given up Your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to You on behalf of ourselves and all people according to their needs. Our hearts have burned in us, Lord, as Your Word has been read and preached. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace that we may not waver in faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us and to our children receptive hearts that we may hear and hearing believe and believing be steadfast in this faith and hope all our days. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. You've cleansed us, cleansed us, O Lord, with water and the Word in holy baptism. And You have marked us as Your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up Your name in word and works for as long as we live. Guide us so that with souls purified by obedience to the truth, we may love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Lord, in Your mercy. Hear our our prayer. prayer. Bless your church, O Lord, that she may welcome the stranger in Christ's name and manifest the unity of the faith in the bonds of love. Gather together those who are separated and preserve their faith by your word until all precautions and shelter measures have passed. Bless today those training for church work vocations. Especially we remember in our prayers our vicar, Mr. Alan Shaw. Keep him and Faith, Moya and Paul in your care as Alan studies and learns on the job what it means to be a minister of word and sacrament. We thank you for his message to us today. Continue to grant him joy as he serves you and the members of our community. And bless each of us as we live out our baptismal vocation of worship, witness, prayer, and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from all afflictions and grant us strength to bear all our burdens, O Lord. Hear us in particular, first for those who are sick and recovering. We remember especially those family members who are ill with COVID-19, and we pray especially today for Viola, Mark, Steve, and Zachary. For those who are sick and in need of your healing touch, and in need of your comfort and care this day. We remember Fuad, Gary, Marty, Dave, Eve, Sarah, Sandy, Karen, Austin, Avery, Hannah, Robin, Carol, Mary, and Susan. For for them and for those that we name silently in our hearts today, we pray. According to your gracious will, heal them who are, heal our friends and family who are sick, relieve those who suffer, comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dying. Fathers, we remember that those who are in need this day of your protection, your strength, and are looking to you for a measure of patient endurance. We remember especially the premature infant James Nugent, who is still in NICU, doing well. And we ask for peace for his parents, Kelsey and Peter. We remember those who are elderly and living alone. We remember families with school-aged children who are adjusting to the challenges of work and online schooling for caregivers, for those awaiting future surgeries, for engaged couples who have set their wedding date but now must await rescheduled wedding dates, for essential workers around the world, especially those who are transporting, stocking, and delivering food, medicine, and supplies to our nation. We also remember small businesses struggling to stay open. 
for these and for so many others who look to you as a source of their strength, we ask an abundant measure of your grace and mercy this day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the God of hope, the giver of a new tomorrow. We pray that you would be with our high school and college seniors who are celebrating a year of achievement and looking forward to, a fu to the future. For small business owners who are looking toward the future and perhaps at this time wondering what the future holds. And for those who are unemployed and underemployed. Give them encouragement and peace in the midst of all that they face. And bless them at this time, we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks. Thanks for the gift of life. And we remember today our expectant mothers especially our three Sarahs, Sarah with an H, Sarah without an H, and another Sarah. Sherry, Whitley, Ashley, Faith, Jenna, Courtney, Kaylin, Lauren, Ali, and Molly. Give them a measure of comfort and the reminder of your presence with them as they await the day of their delivery and encourage them with an added measure of your strength for that day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, Father, we give you thanks for so many things. For the gift of technology that keeps us connected with family and friends. For birthdays and for another year of life celebrated by so many this week. We give you thanks that uh, Zach Hefner will be celebrating his 20th birthday and for the chance he has to celebrate that with his brother Jacob in Virginia. For Justin's graduation from part one of military uh, medical school, and from Hannah's release from the hospital. We pray that as we celebrate and give you thanks for so many things this day, Father, that you would remind us that you are the giver of every good gift. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Stay with us, O Lord, and be our strength and our weaknesses and in our time of hope, and be our hope in our time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith, even unto death. Keep us, we pray, with them in your faith and reverent fear, that we may be found faithful when Christ comes again in his glory, to bring fulfillment to all things, once and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. These and whatever other things we need, O Lord, we pray you to grant us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ whose death has made full atonement for our sin, and whose resurrection has granted to us the promise of our own joyful resurrection to eternal life. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We offer up the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our, our Father. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Indeed, everyone needs compassion and love, and we give thanks that our God is mighty to save and has done so in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. We go forth from this place as people encouraged, strengthened in our journey, and blessed as we are enabled to know of His love for us and to seek ways that we can also love one another. I invite you to receive his blessing now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We close with the final hymn, if I can find it, is Stay With Us.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.